and we're live. Welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, and if you're catching up from across the Atlantic, good evening. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you for the Violin Channel for hosting me today. My name is Michael Katz, I'm playing for you live from Queens, New York, and we have uh, an awesome selection of music for you today. Uh, we'll have uh, plenty of chances to talk with each other over the next 30-40 minutes, but without further ado, we'll jump straight into the music. Um, with a little appetizer, um, a Chacona by Giuseppe Colombi. Because I can literally, I literally cannot think of anything better to do. 
So um, I'll be playing for you the first three movements of Bach's uh, third suite in C major. It will be the prelude followed by two dances, the allemand and the courant. Thank 
Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Uh, I see some very lovely, uh, kind comments, and uh, so wonderful to see people from all over the world. Uh, we're going to switch gears to something completely different and jump 250 years into the future um, for a piece that is very close to my heart uh, because it comes from my home, from Israel. And if you talk with uh, Israeli musicians and you ask them who, in your opinion, is the greatest Israeli composer or at least uh, the most influential, most important Israeli composer, they would almost unanimously say, Paul Ben Chaim. Um, ben Chaim was born in Germany as uh, Paul Frankenburger, and very quickly he made himself a staple in the inner circle of the uh, German music world. He was assistant to the great Bonavato and uh, a great conductor and composer in his own right. And with the rise of uh, Nazism in the early 30s, he realized that being Jewish, that Germany was no longer a place for him, so he escaped to Israel. And he decided this was time for a new chapter in his life, so the first thing he did was change his name from Frankenburger to Ben Chaim, which means uh, son of life in Hebrew. And he wanted to also uh, make a new chapter in his music. So he started um, studying um, Middle Eastern music, both Arab and Jewish, and he was really captured by uh, all these sounds that for him were exotic and foreign at the time. Um, obviously he brought uh, decades and centuries of European-German tradition of classical music, so to hear all these local sounds was um, very special and striking for him, so he decided to start incorporating these sounds and local styles in his music, and he created a new style that he called uh, the Mediterranean style, and uh, generations of composers after him um, uh, adopted this style. He was teacher to some of uh, Israel's greatest composers, and this piece that I'm going to play for you is called Music for Cell, uh, quite appropriate. Uh, it was written in 1977 for another Israeli cellist, uh, Uzi Wiesel, who uh, was teacher for many great Israeli cellists or students. Uh, he was my one of my teacher's teachers, so you could say he's one of my cello grandfathers. Um, and this piece, as I mentioned, uh, it's going to incorporate all these Middle Eastern sounds. So you're going to hear a lot of chromaticism and a lot of uh, ornamental writing, things like... <laughs> sounds of the desert. Um, this piece is in three movements. Um, they're all quite different from each other, but all of them are going to um, feature this unique juxtaposition between uh, European uh, classical writing and Middle Eastern music. <laughs>
composed music for cello by Israeli composer Paul and Chaim. And uh, once again, give me a second to look at your responses and your comments. Well, again, it's so wonderful to see so many familiar faces, and I'm looking forward to uh, reconnecting with all of you after this concert. Um, before I move to the final piece, um, I would like to ask for your consideration to support and make a donation to the wonderful organization, the Bowery Mission. Uh, the Bowery Mission is based in Lower Manhattan. Uh, it's an organization dedicated to um, providing different services to the homeless of New York. Um, throughout the year, they provide food, shelter, and basic medical care. And as you all know, COVID-19 hit New York extremely hard, and now their work is more important and more necessary than ever, so um, uh, please do consider making a donation. Um, and now we're going to end with a bang um, with uh, another composer who um, fled Europe during uh, the Second World War, but this time he made the move from Hungary straight to Hollywood. I'm talking about Miklos Hosha, a name that might not be familiar to many of you, but whose music you most definitely have heard because he was one of the most prolific, most in demand, most accomplished film composers in Hollywood, writing the music for close to a hundred movies and getting, I believe, 17 Oscar nominations and three wins, uh, most famously for Ben Hoor. So um, uh, most of you are going to hear something familiar. Um, and as I mentioned, Orsha was uh, Hungarian, so his music does include a lot of Hungarian flair and folk elements that might be reminiscent of the music of Bartok and Kodai. Uh, while he was writing movies, uh, music for movies, he was still maintaining a career as a serious composer of, serious composer of classical concert music and worked with some of the greatest musicians of his generation including the likes of Yasha Heifetz, William Primrose, and Grigor Piatigorsky. And this piece I'm going to play for you is the Toccata Capricciosa, which was written in memory of Piatigorsky shortly after his death. And uh, I just realized it was actually also written in 1977, the same year that Ben Chaim, you just heard, was written. Uh, but the pieces are quite different. Um, as I said, we're going to end with a bang. Um, so, Thank you so much again for joining us, and once again, thank you for the Violent Channel uh, for hosting me, and uh, uh, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Thank you. 